Welcome. Um, today we'll be looking at what is the Christian doctrine of salvation. So first let's begin by looking at what is salvation. The word salvation means to be delivered from danger or suffering, to save, help in distress, rescue, deliver or set free. So most often um, in the Bible the word salvation is related to an eternal spiritual deliverance. An example of this can be found when we read in Acts chapter 16 verses 30 to 31. It says, And he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? So they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your household. So in this instance, um, Paul spoke the words to the Philippian jailer in regards to his eternal destiny. Jesus also related uh, being saved uh, with entering the kingdom of God. When we read in Matthew chapter 19 verses 24 to 25, it says, Assuredly I say to you that it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. And again I say to you it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. So we need to ask the question, what are we being saved from? Salvation is being saved from the righteous judgment God has upon a sinner. All who have sinned against God are under the judgment of God. But because God is holy and loving, he made a way of escape so that we do not have to face his righteous judgment. Salvation is only found in Jesus Christ alone, who is God in flesh. As it says in John chapter 1 verse 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And also when we read in John chapter 1 verse 14, it says, And the, when, when the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So Christ died for our sins and rose from the dead. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 1 to 4, Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I have preached to you, which also you received um, and in which you stand, by which you are saved. If you hold fast that word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain, for I delivered to you first of all that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. So the reality is that all of us have sinned against God and deserve judgment. Uh, that is the truth of the matter. But Jesus Christ, who came to this earth, never sinned. He came sinless into the world through the birth, uh, through the Virgin Mary. Um, so we read in 1 Peter 2, verses 21 to 22, it says, For to this you were called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps, who committed no sin, nor was deceit found in his mouth. So Christ fulfilled the law of God perfectly and because of this he has perfectly and he is perfectly right he has a perfectly righteous standing before God. The Jewish leaders at the time rejected the claim uh, of Christ to be the Messiah and they forced his crucifixion. But God used this event as a means to place the sins of the world upon Jesus. As it was prophesied in the Old Testament, this is when Jesus became sin on our behalf. It says in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we have died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you are healed. Praise the Lord. How wonderful is that? It also says in 1 John chapter 2, verse 2, And he himself is the propitiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but also for the whole world. Praise the Lord. So the crucifixion is the place where Jesus bore our sins in his body and suffered in our place. 
this was a fulfillment of the prophecy from Isaiah chapter 53 verse 5. It says, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him and by his stripes we were healed. So no sinner can please God perfectly and no sinner can offer a perfect sacrifice to God. Only God in flesh, Jesus Christ, could do that. Only he himself could fulfill that. So as it says in Isaiah chapter 64 verses 6, but we are, we are all like an unclean thing and all our righteousness are like filthy rags. So there is nothing we can do that is righteous before God. We cannot please an infinitely holy and righteous God by anything we do. But on the other hand, Jesus is perfectly righteous before God the Father and he died in our place because we could never do it in our own strength or in our own action. We could never do it. So in order to escape the righteous judgment of God, you must trust in the sacrifice of God. You need to be made right before God by God. This righteousness is given to you when you accept Christ and the sacrifice Christ made for you. Trust in him and believe in what he said. This is what the Bible says we are uh, says we are saved by grace through faith as it says in Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 to 9 for by grace you have been saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God not of works lest anyone should boast. So when you trust in what God has done on the cross um, and in no works of your own then the righteousness of Christ is given to you just as your sins were given to Christ so we have traded our sins for his righteousness praise the Lord what a loving God that we have that he knew we could not do it because we are sinful in this earth but he who knew no sin God himself became flesh to make us righteous by his death on the cross praise the Lord so once you have Christ trusted in what Christ has done, then you possess eternal life and you will never face the judgment of God. Praise the Lord. So in John chapter 10 verses 27 to 28, it says, My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me and I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. Praise the Lord. And that is what salvation is all about. It is knowing the truth that we all have sinned and all have fallen short of the glory of God. But Christ is redeeming us out of that sin where no man can do it by his own strength, not by any works, not by anything because of the inherent sin in our lives. But Christ who knew no sin, God himself, came to this earth and died on the cross that we might have life and all we need to do is to accept the sacrifice of God confess it with our mouth and accept him into our hearts and that is when we will receive redemption from us and cleansing from our sin praise the Lord so the second point is that what is repentance and is it necessary for salvation so we often associate the word repentance to mean turning from sin. The other biblical definition for repentance also means to change one's mind. The Bible also tells us that true repentance will also result in a change of action. So when we read in Acts chapter 26 verse 20, it says, but declare first to those in Damascus and in Jerusalem and throughout all the regions of Judea and then to the Gentiles that they should repent Turn to God and do works befitting repentance. So to repent in relation to salvation is to change your mind in regards to Jesus Christ. So in Peter's sermon on the day of Pentecost, he concludes with a call for the people to repent. In Acts chapter 2 verse 38, it says, Then Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift 
of the Holy Spirit. So what Peter is asking them to repent from. So, so what is it that Peter is asking uh, them to repent from? We read a few verses earlier in Acts chapter 2 verse 36. It says, Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God had made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. So Peter is calling the people to change their minds from the rejection of Christ as the Messiah to faith in him as both Messiah and Savior. So this is the same in the world today. When the people of this world come, come before Christ in repentance, it is the changing of their minds to know and accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, to know that it is God himself, Jesus, who could forgive your sins and only him. It is only through Jesus you can receive um, salvation. So repentance and faith can be understood as two sides of the same coin. It is impossible to place your faith in Jesus Christ as the Savior without first changing your mind about who he is and what he has done. Whether it is repentance from willful rejection or repentance from ignorance or disinterest, it is the change of mind and heart. So biblical repentance in relation to salvation is changing your mind from rejection of Christ to faith in Christ. So we need to understand the importance of the meaning of repentance. It is not a work we do to earn salvation. No one can repent and come to God unless God pulls that person to himself. John 6 44 says, No one comes to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up at the last day. So while repentance is not a word that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. So it, um, it, it is impossible to truly fully change your mind without causing a change in action. Repentance always results in a change of behavior. This is why John the Baptist called out to the people to produce fruit in keeping with repentance. In Matthew chapter 3 verse 8 it says, Therefore bear fruits are worthy of repentance. So there must, once we repent, these we, they must see a change in our lives. There must be a transformation in our lives. And the fruits that we produce are the fruits of the Spirit. So a person who has truly repented from rejection of Christ um, to faith in Christ will always have an evidence of a changed life. As it says in 2 Corinthians 5, chapter 17, it says, Therefore, if anyone, um, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Praise God. So repentance is absolutely necessary for salvation. Repentance by the changing of your mind uh, about Jesus Christ and turning to God in faith for salvation. As it says in Acts chapter 3 verse 19, Repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Repenting um, in such a manner results in turning from your sins um, a genuine change in your mind and heart and the belief that it is only through the blood of Jesus Christ we can be saved. And this is what true salvation is all about. Praise God and I hope that you find that it is only Jesus who can save you from your sins and that is where you receive your salvation. Praise God and hope this has been a blessing to you. See you next time.